Hello guys, welcome back to the Beastie Room. Now we're going to have a, another rehousing today on a spider that we haven't done in probably over a year. And uh, that particular spider we still have actually. But we've got a new one. And that is the Linotheli Phallax. Now uh, these guys are, they're a tunnel web spider really. Um, someone sometimes known as a curtain web spider. Uh, these guys come from South America, and these are one of the more colorful variants of these particular spiders. And this one here, we purchased this one from uh, Graham at Backmar Breeders. Many of you would have heard of him. We see him on Facebook. He does some really cool um, breeding projects, and he breeds some really interesting spiders. And if you go to the shows, make sure you go over and have a look at his table because he's quite often has a table at the shows and uh, where he sells all of his homegrown captive bred stock. So do go and have a look. Now, he messaged me and asked me if I was interested in taking this female on, uh, of which I see that of course I am. I'm very keen. We would still like to breed these. So we do have a female. She's getting on a little bit now. Um, and this is a younger one. So we'll get this set up and then we will start the hunt for a nice, uh, fresh, mature male. Now, our old female, we did pair up last year uh, and nothing came of it. Nothing at all. And because of the way that they're housed and the way they live, they, they build quite complex um, tunnels and web tunnels and what have you. And so this makes finding malts and stuff like that quite difficult. And um, we bred her back, oh, when was it? Uh, we can have a look on there. Back last March. So this time last year, we bred her. So you would have assumed if um, she was going to drop a sack, she would have dropped it. We've not seen a malt in there, um, but that's not to say that she hasn't malted. I would put money on the fact that she has. And um, so, yeah, so we're back to the square, back to the drawing board, really, and we're going to have, a, have another go. Now, what we're going to do with this one, we're going to house this one different to how we've done the last one. We've done the last one with a simple, um, we use clay balls in the bottom, then we put a membrane, then we put soil on because we wanted to maintain that humidity in there because they do enjoy a little bit of humidity. Um, and then what we've done is we used branches and sticks to create a sort of wigwam effect. And then we popped our spider in there and we waited for her to actually web the whole thing up. Now, I think you can have a little look over there now and you can see the web tent that she's built. Now, at the moment, what we're doing now is we've allowed her to dry out quite substantially. Um, and this is in the hope that maybe when we revitalize her, um, we may leave her in there or we may just pull that apart and start afresh with her, try with a brand new enclosure. But what we're going to do with this one is we're going to set this one up differently. We're not going to bother with the clay balls. We're going to go straight in with the soil. And then rather than having branches everywhere to create that, um, that, web structure above ground we're going to use some of the bark and bits and pieces that we have here to try and create some things crevices and things on ground level now these spiders in the wild will make use of uh, little crevices amongst the undergrowth in rocks and things like that so this is what's given me the idea rather than getting them to web up like our balfouris do for argument's sake where they just web everything that's above ground Rather than do that, I'm tempted to try and get her to web inside so that we can keep the outside looking half decent and, um, and see if that makes a difference. Maybe our spider looks a little bit better. We've done a very similar setup to this with our funnel webs. And you'll remember seeing the videos a long time ago of those. Um, and they've done really, really well in that kind of situation. So I'm hoping that it will be the same for the phallax. So let's have a little look. We're gonna, we've got a mixture of um, our revitalized substrates here. We've got a bit of, whoop, bit of everything going on in here. So 
I'm going to fill this up. I'm going to put a couple more in. We don't need a huge amount. I think it would be nice to try and create some kind of tiered effect, maybe. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do, to be honest. So we can perhaps pull this around a little. See how we can add so a bit more in. This is one of the good things is when you're setting up an enclosure, sometimes we have only the vaguest idea of what we want to try and achieve. And sometimes we've got no idea whatsoever. So uh, we're not literally going to play. So what we can do now, we, we've created this like top corner here. And the idea is, I, I'm really keen to perhaps try and do something. This is on the fly, this is, really on the fly. Um, that might be a little bit too big. Not big enough. Right, okay. So what we're going to do, we're going to half bury that. Put that in like so. What we're hoping for here is we're going to try and get a little bit of a viewing round round the back, and then we can try and do the same here. Maybe that way round. So all we want to do is just try and create some kind of extra areas she may want to sort of like make home yeah we'll get there in a minute we can cover this up try and do that how's that looking you're waving to it yeah. It doesn't help when I don't know what I'm doing either. So what we're doing now is we're going to look for some other bits of bark, and then we can literally try and do something there. So what we're doing is we're trying to create some different crevices and bits and pieces for her to sort of dig away and finally try and make some some sort of home out of put that in there right so that'll do with that I think and then we can add a little bit of a little bit of greenery in here all we're doing here is trying to fill in some of the gaps hopefully she'll actually make her home in amongst all this carnage that's here and uh, we'll see where it goes now we've got this rather fancy bit of stuff here um, how would that look all right that might put that in there like so you notice how this is way way too big for this enclosure but it is in fact quite soft so we can he says so we can tear bits off and we can place them in here that looks quite smart doesn't it mm, I don't see it's right okay don't worry don't panic guys don't panic You'll get to see. We'll put that in there like that. Alright, how does that look? Hey, you show me where. Don't keep moving around with it. I've got a, well, I, You stay put and I'll move it. Is that good? Can you see? So, so now what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of moss 
into the bottom area just to add another dimension like so we can add a little bit of this down in here Right, let's get a water bowl. We're going to put a water bowl down in here, right there. One more little bit of moss. And what we're doing here with the moss is we, we're hoping that it's just going to literally hold this together. That'll do it. We won't want any more than that. So we're going to. Fill our water up. Put it in there. All right, and that is going to be the finished article. Now, how are we doing reflection wise, camera lady? Rubbish. Rubbish. That's really helpful. If you come in closer and then stay in one position, I will move this and we will see. Stay in one position, I will move this left or right. I'll leave it where it is. Well, we're going to want to see the other side. So I'm going to turn it around. You tell me when to stop. And as you can see there now, so what we're looking at here is we've got these crevices in here, and we're hoping that she's going to actually move her way into those and see where we are. And we got one right round the back as well. So hopefully we can get her to actually make up home in there and we might just get a little window into what's going on beyond that. Right then, so now what we're gonna do is put this over here. Um, let's see if we can't get this sorted out. This is very frustrating. Let's have a little look. It's good to be too far away. There we go. Now we get a really good view. So what we can do, we are now going to move our spider in. And hopefully we're going to get a really nice view of it. So if we come in nice and close. Now these guys are very, very quick. Very, very quick. And they're one of the spiders that I, they don't, even when handled gently, they tend to just move very, very fast. So we have to be a little careful as to what's going on. But if we can get a real close up look of just how beautiful this spider is, they've got an absolutely fabulous gold carapace. They don't climb glass very well. So that's an absolute godsend. So what we're going to do, we're going to put it in here, and we're going to, can we see there? Yeah? Can we get in there? Oh, you see that move? See how it doesn't want to leave the, the sanctuary of the web? Right, here we come. Now look at that. That is absolutely beautiful. Right. So what we can do, we come here, we can come round, and we can have a look here. There we go. Now we've got focus. And you can see that really, really cool golden carapace. And that tiger rump, look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. You see the long spinnerets there? This is how these guys make them absolutely fabulous woven web domains. And that gold is just something else. That is so pretty. 
So as you can see there, she's sitting there quite calm. Now out of interest, our other phallax is almost black all over now. So she's getting actually quite old. And we can have a look. So what we're hoping for now is that that little tiny mess in the corner there, this is where she's going to set up home. And hopefully we can actually get it to make up some webbing in there. Now if we go through here, we can see now around the back of that, this is where we want her to actually make up her web. So hopefully she'll go in there, or she can come around this side and we can build it up in here as well. This is the plan. There's our spider. Get a nice frontal view of her now. Look at that. Very, very smart spiders. See if we can't get a nice close look at her eyes. Almost looks like she's thinking and having a look. See if we can't bring this around this way. There we go. Now we get some awesome close ups. Very pretty. Right, there we go. That is one very, very pretty spider. And I do believe, I think to be fair, on a, on a, well, our phallax has just left the building. She's down by my foot. So this is going to be interesting. And this actually might, right, this is going to make someone very happy. She's down there, so if you come down to the floor, and I'm hoping she's down by my shoe. Is she? Yep. Right. So what we do in this situation is we take the slipper off, hoping to leave it there, because we don't want her to run away. Oh, right, I see her. I see her. Now then, if you look at me, I was given these catch tubes that Chris at the Tarantula Room um, produces. And he said to me, check these out and see how you get on and give me an honest feedback as to uh, how good they are. Are they any good? And I was like, well, I probably won't need them, Chris, because I really do like my cricket boxes. But I'll tell you what, we'll take them and we'll see what happens. Now, as it happens, this is a perfect situation where one of these is going to come in really useful. And I mean really useful. Now then, as you can see, we've got no room down here whatsoever. What we're going to do, we are going to place this up against there. She's coming to me. Yeah. So what we're going to do... We are going to send her back this way. So if we look at the tube here, and what we're hoping is spiders generally want to follow the line. Okay? She's at the mouth of the tube now. Can we see the tube? Yep, yeah, that's it. Stay there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to tickle her from this end. Hopefully, there she goes. She's straight in the tube. She's in the tube. We've now... We get the other end and we put it on. Mm. And here, there we have our phallax with no problems whatsoever. I can put my slipper back on. You see? 
Good job I had my slippers on this time, guys. Normally I am barefoot. Right, now then. I did, didn't I? Well, you know what it was, don't you? As I turned the enclosure, she came up the side here, and we are almost at the top here. So she would have been able to have a back leg on here and a front leg here, and she's just pulled herself up. She's gone over the edge. She's ignored the lip on the table because we're missing a little bit here. And she's just come straight over onto the floor. As soon as she hit the floor, she went and followed the bench. So she's followed down the side of the bench. I put my foot to the end because I knew as soon as she come to my foot, she would stop, which is exactly what she done. And then we then had to take our slipper off, leaving the slipper there. That's the important thing. Leave the slipper there. She still thinks that it's all safe and good and we can go ahead and catch her. Now, I must say, if we'd had one of my famous catch cups, the legendary cricket box, we would have had to have gone down the edge like that and we would have had to have got it like that and then we'd have to get her to run and then drop it on top of her. There's a good chance she would have diverted and disappeared. It would have made it quite difficult to catch this sort of spider using the cricket tub. And I'm quite good with a cricket tub. So, you know, it would have still been difficult. Now, with this, this is just one. I might as well show you the lot. This is just one of the catch tubes that Chris over at Tarantula Rooms has produced. And here they are. We've got different sizes. We've got a bigger one here. So this would be absolutely ideal if you're catching things like pokies, um, Singapore blues, any of them big spiders that you really don't want to be put getting your hands too close to, ideal. One of them will fit in there, no problem at all. Then we've got a narrower one, great for small spaces like we've just been in. You know, then we've got the tiny one here, this is what, which is what we used, the tiny, tiny one. And then we've got this round one. Now, the round one's a different thing altogether. I mean, that is round. Um, I'm not 100% sure on the round one as to, I guess we could use it in a similar way. I prefer the square, because even as you know, I don't like, you often see um, people using round things like this as catch cups. I don't like the round ones because you can't close a corner with a round thing, but with a square one you can. So that's why I prefer the square ones. Now with these, these all, the ends come off of both ends. So you've got a tube in the middle. Now you're all sitting there going, well, that's not very good, is it? Can't really see through that. And as you can see, I wasn't actually expecting to use them. So I haven't even got them open and ready, but they come with a, a film on them, which we can take off like that. There is in fact a film on the inside as well. So I'm gonna show you this because seeing them with a film on doesn't do them justice. So now look at that. Isn't that beautiful? That is like a work of art now. You notice there it's got tarantula room on it. Put their little logo on there. Reflection. And reflection. Oh. Not helping, Dave. No, I'm not helping. That's really not helping. Oh my god. <laughs> You're pretty black. Take my word for it. We've got tarantula room engraved on there. <laughs> Sorry about this, Chris. Um, so yeah, and then we can literally once we've got our spider in it, we, we can use it at either end. Once we've got our spider in it, we can literally take the end off, take the other end off, put it into our tank. We can give our spider a little tickle. It's gonna run out. Job done. Really is a very, very cool thing. And I must apologize to um, to young Chris because uh, I never actually thought I'd probably need one of these because I'm so set in my ways. But you know what? Today, it has saved the day. And if we weren't in such a, a rush to uh, catch our spider, 
we would have took the film off the inside of this one. But as you can see now, she's got a lovely green hue about her. Isn't that wonderful? Do you know what? To help camera lady out, we are going to transfer this spider into this catch tube. And we'll have a reflection. Will you? <laughs> Probably. Won't you be able to see? Like that. And I'm going to try and show you just how easy this all works, he says. Right, let's get rid of the stuff all around us. Make a little bit of room. Let's get rid of this. You remember, I'm always telling you guys, get yourselves prepared, clear the area, clear the arena. What we're going to do are you going to go down for me? See, normally we wouldn't be worrying about this, would we? Because we would be putting her straight into another enclosure. Right, there we go. <laughs> Cheeky spider. It's funny, isn't it? When you want them to run, they don't want to run. There we go. Right, we're in. So we're going to get our new, new one in here. And there we have it. Now, by the way, this isn't stressing this spider out at all. Once we can get her to move. There we go. Can we see in there any better? She's got a bit of colouring about her. Yeah, you can see that nice colouring. I might be able to manoeuvre her. Just There we go. Look at that. How's that looking? Isn't she wonderful? And she's she's demonstrate demonstrating these catch tubes really really well. All right, here we go. Yes, they do look rather smart when the when the stuff is out of them. Very cool. Here's the other end. I think there is a, well, there we go. A little bit finicky, this one. Probably as much me as anything. There we go. So they are the ideal thing. And I think you'll see they worked really, really well. You ready for me to pick this up? Mm. We can have a look. Look at that. Isn't that just stunning? Right. Wait two seconds because I've got to get a photograph. Terrible, isn't it, eh? It's just too good to miss. Look at that. Right, so now, now what we're going to do is going to put her back in our enclosure. So what we do is we take an end off. Now as you know, most spiders will try and run uphill. She might slide down. We're going to slide. A little bit of persuasion. Well done. Bear with. Here we go. Once we get her firmly on the floor, she's in. How about that? A nice close up of her there. Absolutely beautiful. Very, very pretty. 
Yeah. Do you remember when we say we, can, we can't always get photographs? So whenever you get an opportunity to try and get a photograph, we have to grab that photograph. Now then, so that is the catch cups from Tarantula Room. Um, believe it or not, I didn't actually intend on featuring those in a video. Um, I'm going to put that on there now, guys, because we don't want another repeat. I didn't intend on... Um, on doing these in a video to be fair um, I was just trying them out for my own benefit um, but I must say in the situation that we have just had it worked absolutely perfectly flawlessly for a simple simple design it really done the job absolutely amazing um, having the different sizes are great I mean you can just keep these stored absolutely perfect i mean this was a really useful one this could be great for like juvies and slings and things like that i'm really actually quite impressed they really are i often look at things like this and think that they're a little bit gimmicky but these have proved their worth today they really have and if you've got if you're a little bit on the nervous side you're not quite sure you're still learning maybe these are a great thing because they keep your fingers just that little bit further away from your spider, which gives you confidence to carry on and do what you need to do. And as we saw there, they worked really, really well. I'm very impressed, very impressed. So go and check out, I don't do this very often. We try and stay away from this sort of thing, but I must say, go and check out Chris at Tarantula Room, um, or if you see him at the shows, he always has these at the shows. Go and check him out and have a look. They are very, very reasonably priced. And to be honest with you, these are something that I do think every keeper should have one of these. Now I've used it, I am very, very impressed. So go check him out and, uh, and see what you think. Go and have a look. I think our spider is well and truly settled in now. She's moved over here. And um, I think you all agree, this is quite a nice looking little enclosure. And hopefully we can see a different style of how she sets up home. I'm really, really looking forward to seeing what she does to this. Um, she might well just web up that corner there, being a spider. We never know, but we can we can only try and, and guide her in the way where we want her to be. Um, yeah, I'm really, I'm really pleased with this. This is gonna look really nice. Um, we will keep her an eye on it and we will see what happens. And if it all works out well, we'll probably pull the other one apart because that's in dire need of a an upgrade um, spiders when they've been in their enclosures they leave behind the husks and the boluses of their food and what have you and it doesn't matter how many um what do you call it you have um she's on the move she's doing really well um i've forgotten what they are the little white creepy things Springtails, spring yeah, it went completely out of my mind. Thank you, camera lady. The springtails, it doesn't matter how many you got in there, they're not going to actually keep your enclosure immaculately clean. So after a good amount of time, especially with heavy webbers, it pays just to tear it all out and let them start again. They do this for a living, these spiders. It's no hardship, you know. They will soon rebuild their house and get it all back to where they want it. So don't be afraid to um, pull it apart and start again. I'm really, really pleased. Right then, well, that turned into something I didn't expect it to be. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you like our new phalax. And remember, go and check Graham out. Um, he's often on Facebook, Backmar Breeders. Does some wonderful work with some really cool spiders. Check him out. Um, and also, check out the catch tubes from Chris at Tarantula Room. Absolutely fabulous. Right then, I hope you enjoyed that. And don't forget, be gentle, be calm, be gentle. I'm all over the place, guys. I'm all over the place. Take two. I am shocked today. I am absolutely frazzled. <laughs> right, don't forget, be, be calm, be gentle, and love your spiders. <laughs> I'll see you soon, guys. Well done, Dave. <laughs>